What is artificial intelligence? Hello, my name is Richard Kirshner, and today we're going to go over what is artificial intelligence. One example of today's artificial intelligence is a smart home. So, welcome to my smart home. Smart homes are run by artificial intelligence. Let's have a look at some of the key features of a smart house. Home appliances are voice controlled. Sensors adjust lights and air coolers according to the climate. Security systems can detect movement outside and warn the residents. All the appliances are interconnected to each other and can detect vehicles in the driveway and let the owner know. Home appliances can be controlled remotely through the phone. Now this is just one example in today's world. Let us start with a brief history of artificial intelligence. Let's start with John McCarthy. He was the first one to coin the word artificial intelligence and in 1950 56 had the first artificial intelligence conference. Let's jump forward to 1969 with Shaky. Shaky was the first general purpose mobile robot built. And although by today's standard he was very simple, he did mark a milestone in that we were now processing data differently. He was now able to do things with a purpose versus just a list of instructions. Albeit the list included things like turning on and off lights and pushing boxes around the room. We're going to move forward to 1997. In 1997, the supercomputer Deep Blue was designed, which defeated the world's chess champion in a game. This is the first time when we're actually seeing the computer using logic to beat a human doing some kind of logical, uh, in this case, a game. So it was a huge milestone by IBM to create this large computer that was able to do that in a timely fashion. Let's jump up to 2002 when we have our first commercially successful robotic vacuum cleaner. Nowadays you can go down to the Target and buy one, but back in 2002 that was the first model that was put out. And finally 2005 to 2018 today, in the last more than a decade, we have speech recognition, RPA, dancing robots, smart homes, and many more to come. What I want you to notice about this brief history of artificial intelligence is the compression of time. In 1956 it was just an idea, and more than 10 years later we have our Shaky, the first one who's able to let's flip light switches. And then we go all the way to 97 where we have Deep Blue. And there's a lot of little steps between 69 and 97, but it's actually able to take on a human in chess and beat them regularly. Now they did have a lot of ties, so don't think that it won every game. And then we go only four years later, we have our first commercially successful robotic vacuum cleaner. And as we go from 2005 to 2018, we go from simple speech recognition to very complicated, able to really register with your Google Voice and your Siri. We have our RPA, we have dancing robots, smart homes, and many more things that are just coming out almost monthly in the world of artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? AI is a form of computer science used to create intelligent machines that can recognize human speech, objects, can learn, plan, and solve problems like humans. And I'd like you to focus just on that last one, can solve problems like humans. As we saw earlier, we compare the computer that can beat the chess champion. It's able to, the one before that, able to turn on and off lights in the house. So right now, our concept of artificial intelligence is based primarily on our understanding of how it interacts with humans and how we can compare it to humans. So speech recognition, that's a big one today. Object detection, solve problems and learn from the given data, and plan an approach for future tasks to be done. These are all very huge human things that we do to plan and solve for the future. Types of artificial intelligence. Hi, heard you wanted to know the types of AI. You can imagine our little robot taking us on a tour. The first type is purely reactive. The second type is limited memory. The third type, theory of mind, which is still in the process of being invented, and definitely the question of self-awareness being the fourth, which is still not invented yet, or is it? Let's look at these a little closer. Here we have our purely reactive. He does not have any past memory or data to work with. He takes actions, reacts based on what he sees. Okay, it's not that tough. Observes every move. You can see we have a nice game of uh, chess going on here. And wins. Takes the best possible decision. Purely reactive machines specialize in one field of work only. In this case, we see a, a chess game where they figure out the best moves, calculating all the different moves. Maybe it's calculating the next one in a row in a linear regression model so you can figure out the best marketing. But they're very reactionive. They don't have a lot of data. They just have what's in front of them to look at. Next, let's look at limited memory. Let's try to understand the limited memory setup. 
These machines use previous data and keep adding it to their memory. Suggest me a good restaurant. So maybe we're looking to go out for dinner tonight and we're not sure what we want to eat. Hmm, I see you have been to KFC quite a lot in the past week. There is a KFC nearby. So it goes through the previous location data and where they ate prior and says, hmm, this is probably a good suggestion for you tonight. Thanks. It has enough memory or experience to make proper decisions, but the memory is very limited. This isn't trying to uh, guess what a new location would be or anything like that. It just takes what it has in front of it and goes, okay, this is where you've been. This is what you liked. You gave it two thumbs up, one thumb down, whatever. And then it goes, from these suggestions, this is where I think you should go. Theory of mind. This kind of AI has the capacity to understand thoughts and emotions and interact socially. A machine based on this type is yet to be built. That human looks lonely. Hey human, you want to be my friend? Huh? Okay. Theory of mind is a thing of the future. Certainly we see a lot of the industry poking a little bit at this as it tries to guess how you feel about things. But most of that is still based on previous data. You know, yes, no, two thumbs up, one thumb down. Theory of mind would take it one step further in understanding the emotions behind it. And finally, as we get deep into the uh, sci-fi futuristic, we have self-aware. Self-aware machines are future generation of machines. They will be super intelligent, sentient, sentient and conscious like the Terminator, the good guy in the thing, or Ultron, or Vision from Avengers. For right now, these are mostly movie characters or cartoon characters, but we certainly are getting closer to seeing them in the real world. Hopefully they'll be of the type of the good guys and not the bad guys we see also in the artificial intelligence sci-fi movies. Applications of artificial intelligence. Let's take a look at some of today's commercial and business uses for the AI. We have banking, fraud detection from a large data consisting of fraudulent and non-fraudulent transactions. The AI learns to predict if a new transaction is fraud or not. Online customer support. Most of the customer support is now being automated by artificial intelligence. Cybersecurity. Using machine learning algorithms and a lot of sample data, AI can be used to detect anomalies, adapt, and respond to threats. Virtual assistants. Siri, Cortana, Alexa, and Google now use voice recognition to follow the user's commands. These are all wonderful examples of current AIs that are in the commercial and business world. And these ones in particular have matured over the last half a decade. For instance, very few large banks in today's world would not use banking for fraud detection or for deciding whether it's a good person to give a loan to or not based on their credit scores and where they're from and their income. Same thing with cybersecurity, detecting anomalies, or online customer support. Could you imagine in, uh, say, HP, who has over 70,000 help pages across 17 different languages? Now they have to figure out how to do online customer support to cover new problems that come up and track them so they can build new pages. If they had one person doing that, that would take them a year just to do what they need to have posted yesterday. And of course, our virtual assistants, I don't know about you, but I love mine, kind of like having a private secretary without having a private secretary. Future of artificial intelligence. If we see where it's at now commercially and business-wise, then where is it going? Of course, the imagination is a limit on this one, but you can already see the development in the world today for automated transportation. It'll become a common thing, maybe even early as 2020, when they have the final release from the leaders in the industry. Humans will be able to augment them themselves with robots. Certainly the idea of having the robot bring me my coffee is lovely. Or when I'm doing reports or something else on the computer, it does part of that work for me so that I'm freed up to think about other things. There will be more numbers of smart cities as vehicles, phones, home appliances will be run by AI. Home robots will help elderly people with the day-to-day -day work. Japan already has a very in-depth program where they've begun to integrate robots helping elderly. Even some of the simple things like getting that box of cereal off the top shelf or monitoring if they fall and need to contact the doctor or an emergency to show up. Robots will take over hazardous jobs like bomb defusing, welding, etc. For the future of artificial intelligence, you can see here a number of robotic uses that are already in development. People are already working on these and trying to bring them to us in a commercial and business fashion. Your own imagination can take this to the next level, or a simple Google search will show you some of the stuff that's out there now in addition to these. I hope you enjoyed our brief glimpse at artificial intelligence and what it is today. I want to thank you for joining us. Feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll try to answer those comments and follow up with you.
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.